Hi, I'm Mina Malik Hussain, and you're watching The Coffee Table. And I have something that I want you guys to see. How do you feel about that, guys? This is serious business. But luckily, we have people today with us on the show to talk to us about waste management and recycling and the plastics that we interact with. We have people who are working with our government, doing the pressure, applying the pressure that is needed. As many of you know, uh, we have stopped using plastic bags in Islamabad, which is a massive step towards addressing a situation that is dire. Uh, the video is based on facts and data. It's not an exaggeration. And the time is now. We're really, we're in it. So joining us today on the set to talk to us about plastics and the environment and waste management is Zilli Mariam from Trash Masti and Nazifa Bhatt from the WWF. She is the manager for climate and energy, the climate and energy program at the WWF. Hello, ladies. Hi. Thank you Hi. for being on the show. Thank you for inviting In spite us. of this very somber introduction, <laughs> I feel like it's such a serious business now. And it's, I feel like a lot of times people think about the environment as something, it's a very tree hugger thing to do, you know. And literally, even the word tree hugger is all like you're hugging the trees and you're wearing daisy chains and you're like, oh, you know, save the animals, be a vegetarian, take your cloth bag to the market. But it's not funny anymore. No, it's it's real. Yeah. We are we are in it. I think it's more than that. It's, yeah. it's, it's in our in our daily routines that we have to, uh, you know, in, embrace environment completely. Yeah, it's not it's just reached, hugging the tree. Yeah, exactly. And we reached a point where we can't ignore it anymore. Like mm. the Amazon is on fire yeah. right yeah. now. Like as we speak, the Amazon forest is on fire for a variety of reasons. But the Amazon rainforest provides 15% of the oxygen that we all breathe all over the yeah. world. So. It's not just a fire. It's it's this is our survival is at stake. So uh, Nazifa, tell me um, the work that you do with the WWF and with the as an environmentalist. Um, now Islamabad is the first city in Pakistan to actively stop using uh, plastic bags, yeah. and the government is working with uh, the WWF to implement all of this. Yes. There's a great humongous amount of work that's gone into this. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us something about that? Okay, firstly, I think the capital state uh, has been selected because to set the precedent yeah. for the rest of the uh, provincial capitals also to yeah. come on board later. And also, since, uh, you know, the government uh, is already been, you know, there's a lot of global pressure as well mm. on plastic pollutions. Indus being the second largest uh, of, you know, second largest transporter of plastics. Do you know that? It's no. A hundred, yes, it's 164,000 tons of plastics. Goes that into in the this, in this yeah. river. Yeah, and it is a year. It basically takes, it transports that amount of plastics into the oceans. <gasps> yeah. So our river yes. is contributing. Yes, according to the UN Clean Seas. Yeah. That's right. And uh, it's very unfortunate, and even we were like shocked mm. when we got to know these facts. Yeah. Um, China's Yangtze is mm. at uh, the number one spot. And we're number two. Yeah. I didn't even realize that we were manufacturing at that level where we're uh, contributing well, so much plastic to the world. <laughs> you know, if we yeah. were China and we were like, well, you know, we make everything in the world. Yes. <laughs> but we are, we are unfortunately the contributors at least. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But we can't really, uh, you know, blame Pakistanis only mm -hmm. for the contribution yeah. to the Indus. It's also the other tributaries and other water bodies that are contributing into the Indus right. as well. So it's coming from elsewhere also. Mm. But it's still primarily our yes. problem. Yes, so and that our was, responsibility. I wouldn't exactly, say problem. But exactly. So that was also a reason that pushed the government mm. and moved them to take this initiative immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not only a problem that is just uh, you know, scattered plastic bags or plastic or single-use plastics, you may call yeah. them, 
Uh, it's also the plastic being added into the water bodies, mm. the plastic that is burnt. So it's not only causing one problem, and now yeah. it is in our food chain. So we like are a part of it, I mean, everywhere. That video is just, when I saw it for the first time, I just wanted to stop eating altogether. <laughs> I was like, I can't deal with this. A hanger a month? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's all there in our yeah, soils as well. Exactly. It's not only in water yeah. bodies, it's mm. in, in soil as well. So how does it get have. into the soil? The waste we are producing mm. every day, yeah. it's there in the dub sites or elsewhere. Mm. And then it, it does not degrade, but it, it, has, it turns into bits and pieces. Okay, and so vegetables. It, it keeps getting smaller. Yeah. It's not, but is, there's, so it disintegrates, but yeah. it doesn't degrade. It doesn't, it doesn't degrade. degrade. Yeah. So what's the difference? I think there can be fragments of it. Hmm. So, uh, you know, that, that was what we were having in the morning. We were having a conversation that, you know, are there any solutions that can degrade plastics? Yeah. If you say plastics, don't tell me that, you know, you can degrade it, you know, yeah. you, you can destroy it completely. Hmm. So in one form or the other, it does stay, you know. Okay. It doesn't really disappear in the air, hmm. you know. Hmm. So that is a misconception that you can degrade it, you know. It's, okay. Uh, so it can definitely be broken down into pieces. Yeah. That is degradation yeah. for so plastic even when but that is a bigger problem hmm. because then you know it's fragmented you can't collect it yes so and microplastics then, then starts so exactly. become the thing and in the video yeah. and then yeah. it comes That's into right. the food chain hmm. because it goes into the water and then, yes. and then we intake it. and then in the soils as well in the soils Same. in the water it's so that's even more dangerous than the uh, whole bag so when, or whole plastic bottle. When bottles. people say it's, it's biodegradable yeah. Yeah. and they're using the chemical for yeah. to, to degrade it biologically yes. Yes. Actually, it's not happening like that. Right. So it's, this is just so. a sort of, uh, it's a comforting thought. Yeah. That, oh, you know, well, it's a biodegradable plastic bag, so it's still okay. So yeah. biodegradable must be or with the organic base. Oh, this one okay. is not with the organic hmm. base. It has an organic base. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that's quite important, actually. Yeah. So if one is even using a biodegradable plastic bag, it needs to be, the, it, then it's not, is it plastic if it comes from an organic base? Inorganic is plastic. Yeah. But organic base, it's it's from it's a plant based it's a or plant starch based. based. Oh, okay. or, uh, because plant base okay. is now, um, I don't know if you've seen uh, when you uh, in the developed countries you see a leaf sign and that is an eco label for mm. plant base. Mm. So certain products are made out of starch. There's a yeah. lot of research and development going on even in Pakistan and Faisalabad uh, University in Nibji um, about making and creating bioplastics. So those oh. plastics will definitely degrade mm. and then the microorganisms are going to consume it. But that is still at a very, you know, inception phase. Mm, it's very know. nascent. Yeah. Again, we're very late to sort of get on to the, I wouldn't say bandwagon because that doesn't sound right, mm. but to sort of get on, get with the program really. Yeah. So Mariam, in your work with Trash Musti, just tell us, the, first tell us about Trash Musti. Trash Musti is basically an application. Right where you can just download the application mm -hmm. and start selling your recyclables away. Okay. It's basically for the, for the youth. Mm -hmm. So they can have the habit or they can develop a habit of recycling right. and they are getting money out of it. And what kind of things can you sell? What, what kind of trash is, is you know, sellable, monetized? Okay. <laughs> so plastics, uh -huh. pet bottles, HDP like shampoo bottles. Yeah. Oil bottles, mm -hmm. cans. So like your general household bottles, general most house, of them. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's everything which is recyclable, we collect it. Yeah. And the best part is you can trace that, that uh, where it goes hmm. for recycling. So that's really important to me is because like we have a culture where uh, we have trash pickers or we have, uh, you know, the kabardia, yeah. which is the guy who comes to get all your paper goods. So it's and they actually go, a modern kabardia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with an app. <laughs> with a kabardia, with an app. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really important because it's not enough to sort of sell, for example, your paper, yeah. all your newspapers and your boxes, that, which is the material that one gives to the kabardia. Yeah. And um, but I don't know what happens after the kabardia takes it away. Like I assume that he goes to some factory and mm. gets pulped. It sort of goes to you know paper goes it to its heavenly abode. <laughs> not, not very directly, so but yes, yeah. I think there's so many um, uh, middlemen in between Middle, yeah. and between. so many um, little vendors in between. Yeah. But eventually, yes, whatever's collected, it has value, and that is why it's going to be made into something else. Right. So how important is it to trace this recycling chain? Because that's what Trash Musti does, from what I understand, is that yes, you know where it's going. Um, for the plastics, what we have learned after so many mm. years, mm. that plastic mixes with hospital waste, and oh. then it comes back 
to us and we use, we use it again as containers, as uh, crockery and all that stuff. So, but trash must be it shouldn't, really it shouldn't mix with hospital waste. With hospital waste, they are mixing with it. Oh gosh. So, so it is have, being recycled, but not with appropriate uh, recyclables. Yeah, it's it's been oh, recycled, but not mm. not legally recycled or responsibly recycled. So what we are doing is we are trying to uh, pick up the the companies or the the people those who are trying to do the responsible recycling mm. thing. Mm. So if they are not adding up hospital waste, so we are just giving it to them. So what's so, hospital waste? Is it like syringes and syringes, uh, drip bags, pathogenic and waste, biological pathogenic, waste, yeah. chemical waste. So it's everything, and it's it's highly toxic, highly yes, hazardous, absolutely. and uh, but that contagious. is actually the virgin mm. plastic they are using yeah. for for the plastic thing. Uh, yeah. It's virgin. That's why it has high calorific value. It's uh, transparent, mm. and they can easily convert Mold it, into, it and into anything. Yeah, into anything oh. they want. Wow. So we just don't want more people to die because of this. Yeah. Absolutely, and it seems so senseless when there is a way forward and there are systems, and we're going to talk about systems more in just a second. We're going to take a quick break. Come back, this is very important. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We are drinking our coffee out of a not a plastic mug, because we are responsible that way. <laughs> so, Nazifa, tell me, um, there's a great deal of furor in Islamabad about this plastic bag ban. And there's this whole sort of conversation about how uh, shopkeepers are very upset and people are sort of taking their veggies you know, in their shirts and saying, we are ruined. We have no bags. What will we do? There is no system yeah. in place, which to me is sort of confounding because I, I am a generation that remembers my grandmother going to the Juma Bazaar, for example, and she had a she had a, a basket, mm. and she'd just get all her shopping in the basket. So for me, it doesn't seem like such a huge shock, yeah. but apparently it's very shocking. Um, I think uh, we are a nation now. We don't want to accept change. That's mm. the problem. Mm. And any positive change or any effort that we don't want to make any effort actually. Hmm. And environment is nobody's priority, unfortunately, yeah. when it comes to our nation. I'm not talking about all, but yes, I'm talking about the majority. Because and a I'm lot talking of about this... the educated hmm. sector as hmm. well. Hmm. Um, you know, because they are the ones who do not want to pick up the plastic ba plastic basket or maybe the jute basket that yes. we used to carry. You know, for getting eggs and for getting um, you know all the vegetables and fruits yeah. and meat as well. So, but now, you know, the trends have changed. We'll be happy to carry the meat in a plastic bag yeah. rather than in a jute bag, yeah. you know, which has like a malmalki lining, yeah. you know, it yeah. used to be like that. And yeah. then now they say, somebody was asking me, how are you going to get meat? And I was like, you have a malmalki lining in it, yeah, like yeah. a cotton the way, lining. The way one used to, organic. sort of do. And um, mm. so I think people should not create so much of hype and the, it's how you convey your message. Mm. It's very important that, you know, the local vendors should also understand that gradually they will also learn that the fruits and the food, whatever they are going to carry and sell, is also going to, the plastic bag is going to react with the food. Yes. So I don't know how many people know about it, yeah. but hot items specifically, mm -hmm. they react with the plastic bag itself. Yes. So by the time they come to your table or in your bowl or plate, is it having the same amount of nutrients or toxins? So it Toxins, in fact, even more than nutrients. I think yeah. that the worrisome thing is toxins because like you said, if plastics are being mixed with hospital waste, for example, and then, it, then it's sort of melamine plates mm. are that kind of plastic. Yeah. And we, <laughs> they, we have no way of knowing whether the plastic that's being used, and like you said, it's not legally done. It's, it's not, not food so grade. You it's can't not monitor it. And then we microwave it. Yeah. Yes. And we, we use it in our microwaves yes. and we serve it, the hot food in there. Yeah. And look what we are doing to ourselves. Yeah, and it's incredibly so, dangerous. It is. And again, it's, it's carcinogenic basically. Yes. Yeah. It's cancer causing. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, somebody was asking me that, okay, it's carcinogenic, but yeah. um, I didn't die. You know, I'm like 45, I didn't die. I was like, it's slow poisoning, dude. You need to get yeah, alive. And nobody wants you to die. Yes. You know? yes. <laughs> that that exactly. is the point. We all it. want to live. And the, the same way that people talk about global warming and say, well, it's nice to be warm sometimes. <laughs> not like that. No, absolutely not. Not like that. I absolutely. think that the, it's not only the heating of the or the temperature rises; it's the drastic impacts that the countries are facing. 
floods and uh, droughts. So, you know, our country being uh, on the seventh spot yeah. in the most vulnerable countries of the world. That is, that. I mean, these are, uh, you know, like points seven. that we need to, yeah, That seven. is like top ten. Yes. We are at a huge amount of risk. And the thing is that we can't really implement any kind of change because it has to be a two-way street where you have the government putting in responsible policies, but then you also have people getting on board to actively... It's, it's a lifestyle change, mm. isn't it? It is, yeah? definitely. It's, it's behavioral, behavioral change. That's what, what it is. Yeah, but it will take it will take time to yeah. get people think and realize what they are doing to themselves and to the environment as well. So with so. working with Trash Masti, and I know that you are trying to target a younger sort of demographic, yeah. and sort of begin that change in thinking about how trash is not just something that you can sort of you know, just put in the bin and forget about it, but it's something that we need to be more responsible about. And do you feel like young people seem to be showing we an have, interest? We have a massive response from, from youth, ah. especially from uh, the university students. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they are, they are regular um, suppliers of recycling. Really? Recyclables, yes. Yeah. And they are very much considerate that they have to be responsible recycler. And now, uh, one of the leading universities in Lahore they are on board with us for a proper research uh, on, on this, hmm. that how much recyclable they are producing and how much is collected, what is their carbon footprint yeah. or plastic footprint yeah. actually, and where their recyclables are going. Mm -hmm. and, we are doing, and we are working with them. That's excellent. And once you have data, then you'll be able to sort of better identify <laughs> the areas that need more work. So two more uh, universities, they are getting on board with us as well for typically this, for mm. sustainability thing, for recycling, and they are much more advanced as compared to the other universities in Lahore. That's excellent. That's so heartening. Yeah. So how much recycling does happen in Pakistan? Like I was reading somewhere that we have about, I don't know, 18,000 recycling units. I'm not sure if this is accurate. We do have, but it's not the legal recycling no, thing. Very so it's, it's, it's very informal. It's very informal. And informal. you know, you can have like a very small house with like two bedrooms mm. and there'll be a couple of machines there and they'll be recycling stuff there. So, okay. you know, the types of plastics that mm. are being recycled, not all. Plastic bags uh, in the most, you know, being the least amount of quantities for plastic bags because it's very difficult to segregate the plastic bag out of the mixed waste because mm. it's sometimes it's wet, sometimes it's torn, perished. So you can't yeah. really have that out of the system. But yes, pet bottles, I think 80% mm -hmm. um, of pet bottles are safely recycled. And which are up. the single-use plastics. Yeah, these which are, are the, the water bottles. And yes, mm -hmm. that, yeah. I think they're not safely recycled. Uh, yeah, but, but they're, they're just recycled. recycled. Yeah. They're just recycled. Yeah. So, so this is a so. really important distinction, is that it's not enough to just recycle, but you have to do it responsibly yes. and Respons safely. Recycle. Yeah. So how can we make it more safe? Um, I think, to uh, first of all, we need to identify and get all the uh, recyclers on board and have them registered because mm -hmm. they're unregistered, as she said, that these yeah. are informal recyclers. Yeah. So, you know, the government and, uh, you know, bodies like ours, yeah. we do not know of the places and the exact, you know, number of recyclers that are present in mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. province and each city because they're, it's a mushroom growth. And it's still growing because the population is growing. There's more uh, disposal of these types of uh, waste. And so is this number. But we need to have that first so that once it's registered, then we can probably track down where's what going. And then we can formalize it, put standards there. Mm, yeah. Uh, that's important. So that the data that Trash Musty is collecting, for example, would probably, I imagine, be really useful for this it kind will, of, of course, yes, work. It will be, yes. it will be useful do. at later stages yeah, for definitely. the WWF, yeah. yes. for multinational companies as well, that how much waste they are producing yeah. right now and how much has been responsibly mm -hmm. recycled through Trash Musty. So through Trash Musty, I'm sure that you interact with these informal recyclers as well. Yes, we do. So yes, we do. Why are we are supporting? Huh. We are supporting uh, street vendors as well, yeah. or the street re recyclers as well, or mm -hmm. Kabadia. Mm -hmm. So we just want them to have a more better lifestyle, yeah. the way they are living right now, because uh, every day they get an order of uh, two or three if they're roaming in streets, but through Trash Musty, they're getting more orders. Mm, yeah. So they know where they have to go and pick up the uh, mm. the recyclables from there or to get more so, so the income is is it's uh, substantially more time. it's a it's a pretty i imagine a pretty good incentive in itself to regularize the system whereby then like you said the, you know there are their pickup points 
they know where to go. It's done responsibly and sustainably because then it becomes a system. We can implement a system basically. So uh, WWF mm. is uh, working for uh, on a big, larger scale to identify where the, those recyclers are, yeah. and Trash Mercy is contributing to get the street recyclers on board so they can use our application and they are already using it mm. few of them are they yeah <laughs> few of them and they yeah. are and they just they do want to use it yeah. they know what it is and it's becoming easier for them to get their orders yeah. so i think if but it will take time yeah. it's it's and not i think uh, there's one thing that i'd like to add mm. here that there has to be like a close collaboration between these different tiers mm. you know between the generator whoever's generating the waste who's collecting the waste the middleman uh, the recycler and the end product, where is it, you know, and when yeah. is it going to be, you know, sellable or not sellable. Mm -hmm. So all of that has to be like, it has to be like a closed loop thing. Right. That's what's and important. Sort of when one goes abroad and one sort of travels and sees how they do it. So I feel like there's a great sort of culture of recycling already in place where, mm. you know, you already sort your trash. Yes. So when the trash collector comes for it, you put your paper in one bag, you put right. your glass in one, you put your plastic mm. in another. Yeah. So sort of like when you said the generators, sort yeah. of households and people, we are all yes. generators. General, of general public, yeah. So if we can sort of start doing this, mm. then it would make you know, your job much easier, easier. much easier. Yeah. Because a lot of it has to do with sorting trash also. Exactly. I think it's, uh, that's the worst thing because mm -hmm. our collection is the biggest issue. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the waste management companies that are the government uh, operated ones, it's very difficult for them also because mm -hmm. they also complain that by, we just collect the waste and it's all in one bag from each household yeah. or maybe three bags and they've got mixed waste. Yeah. So they've got cans and glass and broken glass and everything and, and, food and waste medical and waste, food mm -hmm. waste, everything is in one bag. So they just, they just dump it. That's yeah. of no use. Had it been you know, divided or segregated, it would have been different. You know, pe you know, people from compost companies can mm. come and collect the organic waste and make yes. compost. You Absolutely. Know. They can come and uh, take their with the waste that they want for the RDF or whatever mm. fuel they want to make or whatever items they want to create out of it. And so I think it's for the, the recyclables citizens. as yeah, well. It is, definitely. Yeah. So if if they are segregated, it's easier for us to collect. Uh, I'll tell you about Karachi. There are mm. heaps and mountains. You know, yes, there are mountains yeah. of waste, literally. And unfortunately, because we do sampling on site as well, so we had to have the government <laughs> officials. I don't yes. want that job. <laughs> like, go to this landfill, hike up a it's, mountain of garbage. I know, it's terrible, you know. We had to wear those long johns. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had to get the waste sorted. Mm. And it was such a tedious task for yeah. even the scavengers who were doing it for us because we mm. had to um, find out the quantities. It was terrible. And they were like, you know, we pick up the uh, recyclables from the top layers because we can't really go deep inside because we get cuts, we get bruises, it's not the safe. chemicals, sometimes mm. there's acid. They don't know what they're putting their hands and in. There are no proper people. piece. Yeah. So there are a lot of challenges associated with it. And they don't it. have any, and they don't wear PPE. Yeah, they don't want to. <laughs> don't ha they don't have gloves or what anything are else. It's personal protective equipment. The gloves okay. and the, the gloves or masks, masks and the boots yeah. and everything. So that's even more of an incentive to regularize this whole system yes. yeah. is that it's just safer for everybody involved. Exactly. Safer for everybody. Exactly. And a lot of trash pickers are kids. Mm. And that's why Trash Musty is there to eliminate child labor. <laughs> yes. So, this so, is, so we're working yeah, on so many levels of amazingness. <laughs> and we're going to take a quick break and come back very soon. So see you in a second. Welcome back to the coffee table. I'm grilling Nazifa about her, you know, kude wala kaam. It's, it's like massive. It's yeah. mind blowing on so many levels. We have someone who's been in the actual trenches of trash, working for a better life for all of us. Really, you're, you're, you two are sort of our soldiers of the environment. <laughs> Trying to uh, advocate. I'm being flippant, but uh, it's just incredibly important. And I feel like, well, sort of, how can we now move towards a culture where we are trying to be responsible about sustainability? And I feel like we're also, maybe this is our particular problem, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that we... We are a generation that remembers when there was more sustainability, where there was zero waste, where, you know, you, like you said, there were the jute bags yeah. with the muslin, there was the, you know, the basket. 
and we remember this. It's yeah. not something that's so far back in yeah. the past that we just everybody know, knows that there that. was no way that they didn't. It, they've always just been doing it with plastic. They haven't. There was much more paper bags. There were much more wrapping things and cloth, mm. and you know all of that mm. was going on. So I feel like maybe it's also a part of uh, our sort of our idea of being modern. Also, that's true. Is that you don't take things in a basket because that's what old people, old-fashioned yeah. people do. Yeah. It, and you know, it's so backward to do that. And you're going to take it in your plastic bag. <laughs> and like maybe double plastic bag because it's free. <laughs> I want three. And yeah. then you can collect them at home yes. as well yeah. For, yeah. For, your, yeah. for the garbage. That's <laughs> of course. So, but I think plastic bag, is, it's a, a small part of it. Yeah. Mm. So we are using plastic in every, everything. Yeah. From pen to hanger to all the stuff we are using. And to the scrubs that we are using. They've got the microbeads. They have microbeads. Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. So, you know, next time when you go out and, you know, you do your toiletries, get a scrub that does not have those microbeads, the exfoliators. Because you oh. can get organic exfoliators. Do not buy that. Because sometimes it enters while you're scrubbing. It enters into your mouth. That's you don't true. know. This and is, it has no like taste. This is like face wash when yeah. you do tiny yeah. So you can, you, can have, you, can made it, uh, you can make it at home yes, as well. Yes, of course, with yeah. oatmeal and all with of that. With oatmeal and yeah. honey and... Uh, and in a way, I feel like milk. we're lucky because we are not so far removed from all of these sort of home remedies yeah. Yeah. and yeah. the natural way of doing things. It hasn't been that long for us. Yes. Since we've, but at the same time, now our Indus River is the second largest, m- largest transporter of plastic in the world. How did we get here? I was reading about importing plastic scrap also. Yeah. Why are we importing plastic scrap? Um, because of the quality also. Mm. Because they mix it with the local plastics as well. Mm-hmm. They add some virgin plastic as well, right. and then they make stuff out of okay. it. Okay, yeah. so it's, it's done for manufacturing. Yes. But apparently that's not good practice either, because you don't know uh, where the scrap really. is coming ideally, from. Ideally, we should not, because you don't know what type, yeah. what has been done, what is the exact, com- uh, is it what, co- it's definitely a composite mm-hmm. material, so we don't know the exact uh, contents. Yeah, and like you said, you know, it could be mixed in with all yeah. sorts of strange things. Yes. And don't you think it's, un- and I do know that a lot of sort of first world countries kind of uh, export their trash to uh, developing countries yeah. well, just to kind they of do. They get do. rid now, of it. That's why China has banned exactly. the, the import of plastic. And now, yeah. and now I think in the recent Basel Convention, there has been an amendment hmm. um, that uh, on plastic trades. Hmm. Okay. So the governments have to give the approval before they import or export any plastic waste. Oh, now it's yeah. considered okay. as a hazardous Excellent. Component, so yeah. I'm hopefully that our government is going to... Yeah, because yeah, we... I, I I've, think I've heard this in Pakistan as well. It's difficult now to, yeah. uh, to import to plastics. To import plastics, yeah. yeah. So Cause even the recycling... Because you know where it's coming from. Yeah, definitely, yeah. you have to know. Because years back, um, there was a news that uh, hospital waste from other countries, yes, they, they, uh, some people, they just uh, transported it here as well. And they used Good it. Grief. In, yeah. So, but now it's, but it's not just for them. our hospital waste. Yeah. It's, it's like not, some other country's <laughs> hospital waste. They're like, hey, take this too. Yeah, let's oh, just God. make money out of it. Oh gosh! And so, again, sort of making money, sort of it boils down to that. But you can make money in a responsible, sustainable hmm. way, and it, you can. Of you course, can make money from a responsible, re- sustainable way. You yeah, can. Yeah, and the thing is, like, sort of quite, sort of at the basic level of it, if you're eating a hanger a month, hmm. <laughs> you know. And the credit it's fine card. to make money. <laughs> yeah. And you're eating a credit card a week if you're sick. Yeah. And if you get sick, yeah. then, then okay, you can keep your money, but it's not. It's, not it's going to be spent you. on your health then. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's sort of we are pushing ourselves into a vicious cycle now. Where we it's have. actually I feel like it's really just we are being exploited on so yeah. many levels. Yes. And being environmentally aware is our way of kind of reclaiming not just our health. But our air and our earth and our water, everything, everything. everything. So actually, the environment we are living in, we are just pollu- we are living in a polluted environment. And, and, and it hasn't been as bad also. as this yeah. since the beginning of no, 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 the no. earth. No. Yeah, never. Yeah, I think uh, after industrialization and modernization, these uh, these things have their own benefits. But if they're used in um, you know in a in a way where in a, in a sustainable ma- mm. way. Mm where it can be recycled, because we cannot consume more than what the earth can take back. Yes. You know, we should not consume so much. Right. So, because right now we're, we've over-consumed everything that we had. So, and we're continuing to do so as we're well. We're continuing doing yeah. it. 
And we have nothing left for coming generations exactly. to use. Exactly. And this is something that everybody needs to get on board with because a lot of countries contribute more to plastic waste yes. and, and solid and other kinds of waste and environmental degradation than other countries. Right. Actually, we have a uh, high population mm -hmm. than other countries. We have uh, more problems. We have more issues because of this uh, increasingly population. <laughs> yes, and exactly. And this is what people need to, you know, there are just a lot of consumers so yeah. they're who are buying more waste, a lot definitely. of more products. It is, it is ideally, you know, the baseline is the population. Yeah. Then we develop mm. ideas, we develop these mm. items, and then they are consumed and they come back to the environment. Yeah. But uh, the environment has to take pay the toll, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so what are things that we can do as consumers to be more responsible consumers? Because some, some alternate alternatives are expensive, and mm -hmm. that sort of does put people I off. I think the cheaper ones are like, you know, everybody has like a cloth bag in their yeah. house. Everyone. Use that. I mean, there's no shame. I, mean, I, I was actually happy to, you know, go with the crowd, like uh, uh, with some colleagues, and they were carrying just kapraika bag basically yeah. so that was and i was like there were dirty bags you know like the jute bags and you know made out of um, um, old clothes and you know patchwork yeah, and all yeah. that they were very pretty as well yeah. but old and you know dusted and raggy and yeah. so i was like you know let's have that rustic feel and you know look a little right. funky you just have to and you get carry things that done. instead yeah. of you know when you're going for shopping specifically yeah. buying shoes or bags or you know any items that are not wet you mm. can use the plus uh, the the cloth bags I mean, just put it in the bag, like your handbag, yeah. and then you can use it whenever you want And you can also get to. those really nifty plastic bags, but mm. they're super strong, and they fold yes. up like this big. So yeah. I have like a bunch of those, and I just stick them yeah. in my purse. Mm. And literally, when you open it, it sort of becomes It becomes big. big. Yeah, <laughs> even WWF has those. They do? Yeah. Okay, so you guys watching yeah, this. the pocket bags, you can come yeah. and Go get to them, WWF yeah. with the logo. Those. those are so great. Those pocket yeah. bags are amazing. Yeah. Are you, I have They've got a zipper as well yeah. around, so they're very okay. compact. You can open it up, and then it becomes quite big. Very, yeah. um, it has a good strength, yeah. so you can put about like till two and a half kg stuff in it. Not so. bad. And that's, it's waterproof. That's pretty good. So it's about sort of a, just a matter of sort of re, a mindfulness, sort of retraining yourself to sort of take the bag along. Yeah. Uh, maybe use uh, your own water bottle. I think it should. Instead um, of single use, I think from, single use from, plastic yeah. must be stopped because exactly. that is uh, what is coming to the environment more frequently rather than the things which have more sustainable yeah. sustainability. Uh, so one thing I'm also them. curious about is that we you know when we talk about a return to paper bags, for example, mm -hmm. and plant-based material, but if you have to chop down a tree to make a paper bag, then isn't it on some level plastic might be slightly better because at least you are not chopping down a tree? Okay, so with plastic bag as well, I think there's um, there are a lot of there's a lot of debate that's going yeah. on in the provincial government as well, mm -hmm. and uh, the ideas with the stakeholders came out and they suggested that probably we should have a plastic bag that is of a thicker, uh, you know, it's thick enough, mm -hmm. like about 40 microns, because yeah. the plastic bags, the flimsy one that mm -hmm. you get outside on the, you know, maybe Everywhere, like a window or a yeah. speed talker, or maybe you know, like the challi wala, yeah. uh, you will probably, you know, that, that tears off. Although yeah. that has strength, but it's very flimsy. It's yeah, like it's less than flimsy. 15 microns. Okay. So it's very thin. So if you make like thicker bags, they mm. can be reused yes. as well. So because these are single use completely. Mm. So we, what we're trying to promote is get rid of the single use plastic yeah. bag at least, you know. I really like how this, you know, it's a desi joke so, now yeah. that everybody, desi households have a plastic bag full of plastic <laughs> yeah. bags. <laughs> we've true. been environmentally <laughs> conscious from the start. I think we all have a fetish for that. <laughs> Like, I've already been doing that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes so, Marie, if you want I to think, say something. Yeah, I just want to add a few more things. Mm -hmm. That we are using plastic spoons, plastic yes. um, straws. Uh, straws, and plates as well. And then we have uh, thermopole plates as well, and, and glass. I think those are the things, those are more hazardous, because people are consuming plastic through them as well. Mm -hmm. Because and those are easily replaced yeah. with they bamboo. can be easily exactly. replaced or just yes. regular cutlery yeah. that you can the just wash. Yeah. Yeah. So um, their restaurant in uh, Islamabad, I think those who are using. I think uh, there are a couple of restaurants, Espresso and uh, Nikos and yeah. Karachi. They're mm. even using. They they have avoided lamination, like mm. all the uh, cling films. So they're using the uh, beeswax. Hmm. Oh, the wraps. cloth with yeah. these back wraps. They're those pretty. are really They're great. They're very pretty. Those are yeah. lovely. Yeah. And, and surprisingly, it's sort of really nifty. They're mm. not as hard mm. to use as one yeah. thing. Yeah. Washable as so well. It's washable yeah. as well. 
So I think we, we must replace these things with the, with the they, they can be replaced. So there are many things which can be replaced hmm. for, for the single use plastic. So making smart well. choices. Yes. Make, yes. yes. And sort of, and as a consumer also being more aware of what you're consuming. Exactly. Hmm. So then people can respond. So there are restaurants in Lahore that use metal straws now, hmm. for hmm. example, or they're using take, the for paper take straws away, like, they're hmm. using um, wood cutlery, hmm. like bamboo, hmm. yeah. forks and, and spoons. Hmm. Yeah. So they're obviously responding to a certain demand. Of so course, I think that of course. It, it's not overrated but, to but say. But if it's available in the market yeah. as well. And if the price and I think is when Yeah, when, when people so were talking about like, where are the alternatives? Hmm. So the market has to be created for these products. Yeah. So the, the, all so there the, is an opportunity yeah, is for an opportunity. entrepreneurs as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. That they can come up come with, with more beautiful business, ideas, yeah. with more sustainable ideas for uh, as an alternative yeah. for the single use plastic. But that's such a great idea actually because we're not trying to sort of crush people's yes. businesses. No, no, not no, at all. Not creating at all. alternatives. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business shift and yeah. a cultural shift. Yes. Both hmm. that's required. And I think there's a lot of opportunity and you know, people should tap it. Yes, of course, the government has to sort of subsidize a little bit and, you know, uh, And a lot of change needs of, to come, yes. has to be policy of driven. Of course, yes. Because if it, it needs to come from up here yes, for it to go trickle down. Yeah, but it's also level. like an individual's responsibility yeah. because we see people, educated people, they would rather, rather th take like the disposable cup rather than this cup. They would say, yeah. okay, that's yeah. hygienic. Yeah. How do you know that's hygienic? You're having hot coffee in it. Oh exactly. my God! Please. It's got all sorts of carcinogens floating in it. Exactly. Unhygienic. Yeah. Unhygienic. That's very unhygienic. Yeah. Exactly. Very exactly. Unhygienic. And you it's don't unhealthy. know where the plastic huh. came from. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that I'm really hoping that everyone's mind is going to be blown now because yeah. they're like, this plastic <laughs> cup could have been a yeah. bag. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's true. Like, that's true. I'm really sort of appreciating my mug here. Yeah. <laughs> At least you know, yeah, you, it's you weren't a strange. <laughs> but on this note we're going to end we started really seriously but we're ending with a laugh thank you so much ladies for being on the show thank this you. was an extremely edifying and also kind of hopeful conversation because it's really up to us if we work with our government and policies are made that we can all work towards hand in hand and together we can all make a change it's that's it's it's complicated but it's also just that simple thank you so much for watching i really hope that this has given you guys some ideas about the changes that you can make in your daily lives to make your sort of your consumption more responsible and um, you know here's to a healthier future for all of us so we'll see you next time on the coffee table bye now